Table this afternoon. We're going to do things pretty much like we usually do, give these good lady and gentlemen a chance to introduce themselves, and I'm going to ask each one of them what they think the most significant event in the world of organics has been in the past year. Then we're going to go through a bunch of questions that you guys have submitted, and we'll kind of pick one person that's sort of a leader in that field to get an answer, and then give everybody else a chance to respond. If questions come to mind, or if there's something that you would like us to amplify on on any given question, stick up your hand. If it's something we're going to cover later, we'll put you off for a little while. Otherwise, uh, we'll stop and answer it. I mean, this is this is all about you guys, and uh, we love sharing and learning from each other. But we can also have a little game that we play, the same thing that we do at our seminars at the nursery, and that is. If you didn't write your question down, but you don't want to admit that something's going on in your own yard, you simply stick up your hand and say, my neighbor couldn't be here this afternoon, but they wanted me to ask you about such and such, and uh, we'll all know what's going on, but you, we, we pretend that we don't. Uh, I'm Bob Webster. It's a pleasure to have you here. I hope everybody's enjoyed the Festival of Flowers. I truly think it is bigger and better this year than it's ever been, and uh, gosh, there's a lot of good stuff out there. Well, why don't we get started, and guys, first of all, and Judy, why don't I uh, give each one of y'all a chance to say a word about yourself, about your own businesses, about your publications, uh, about anything that you would like to talk about, and uh, John, why don't we just start down at your end of the table. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so I'm John Rumble, and... Um, did you ask a question about what was the most important thing, or is that for later? Let's, let's we'll do that it. next. Let's okay. go through and just talk Good. about who you are right. in case nobody recognizes you from the Ladybug bag. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sound like you on there. Well, Ladybug is our product line. It's a real nice line of organic gardening products. I, I created that a few years ago, and I wasn't satisfied with what I was finding in the bags. So I, I created Ladybug, and if you ever try that one, uh, you'll find out that... Um, it's consistent. You'll see a good, high-quality product in there. I own the Natural Gardener in Austin. It's um, oh, the Organic Gardener's headquarters in Austin, at least. And um, uh, as a result of being uh, an organic gardening center, we also uh, teach out there. We have uh, weekly classes, like Bob does, and um, we teach. That's we're a teaching facility. When we uh, started, there was uh, no good place to go see organics at work. So I built a place that you could come see excuse me, the vegetable gardens, the herb gardens, the butterfly, all grown organically. So that's who we are. And this is my teacher. <laughs> I guess half to be older than anybody up here. <laughs> anyway, I kind of got started in uh, farming. Accidentally, I grew up on a farm, my wife grew up on a farm, so we bought ourselves a little farm, actually two weeks before we got married. And uh, I wanted to be a modern farmer, so I subscribed to the Progressive Farmer magazine. And in there was an article about the Colorado potato beetle that had migrated into Texas and all the damage they were doing. So I went and looked at my potatoes, sure enough, the beetles all over. So I went and got the malathion that they recommend. I was out there dusting all their plants, and a buddy of mine walked up and said, Back, stop, you're killing ladybugs. Ladybugs, I thought these were tater bugs. He said, no, they're good bugs. <laughs> so I killed some good bugs. I didn't think much of it. And, uh, no, it was a week or so later, boy, those potato plants looked bad. Didn't see any beetles, but under, under the leaves and on the stems, it's full of plant lice. Called his buddy, he said, yeah, I knew that happened. He said, those lady beetles are on there keeping those aphids in check. 
He said, now, the labor, it takes them a long time to come back, so they just have a new generation every seven days. So I asked this guy, how do you know about good bugs and bad bugs? You didn't grow up on a farm. My feelings was hurt. Here's a city guy telling me something I should have known. He said, I've been really reading a little magazine called Organic Garden and Farming. He gave me some copies of that, and I got to reading it. It made so much sense. That's what my dad and my grandpa and all of them were doing. They didn't know they were calling, they didn't call it organic. So we became, I guess, the first organic farm in Texas, as far as I know. And then John got into it, and uh, all these people got into it over here. Some of them probably before I did. But anyway, it's a thing nowadays. And uh, when we want something written about it, this little lady right here, she does all my books. So if there's anything spelled wrong in those books, I didn't do it. <laughs> Speaking of books, when is the book on paramagnetism and uh, all going to be out? It's at the publisher. <laughs> Some for y'all to look for, Malcolm's latest work, carrying on the work of a fellow named Phil Callahan. And maybe if we have time later in the roundtable, he can tell you a little bit about it. But uh, a very, very interesting pro or property of a number of uh, agents called paramagnetism. There'll be a whole book out about it, and it's it sounds like voodoo, but it really is science. Judy, uh -huh. go right ahead. I'm Judy Barrett. I published for 12 years a magazine called Homegrown, um, which grew out of various things I learned from both of these guys. Um, I became an organic gardener out of fright because I went to the store and read the labels. Um, and then I learned that it was just more fun, made more sense, and was, was a good idea. I have a book out now from Texas A&M Press called What Can I Do With My Herbs, which is a result of having a little nursery where people were always saying, what can I do with my herbs? So I finally looked for some answers and found them. I have a new book coming out from A&M in the fall called What's So Great About Heirloom Plants. And so I hope you'll look for that. Thank you. I'm Stuart Frankie with Medina Agriculture Products in Hondo. Um, we've been in the organic business since 1962, and we keep expanding and becoming uh, out, coming out with new products primarily because someone else asks us, can you do this? Can you help us with this problem? Can you help us put this product together? And so that's one thing that I enjoy about a group like this. Uh, get to visit with, with all of y'all coming by the booths, hearing your problems, hearing your interests, finding out what you need. So that's the way we learn to come out with new products. Uh, we're involved in a lot of new things now that are exciting that we can share with you later on. Um, but um, one of the things that we're doing now is we have an organic seminar in Hondo for certified organic growers. The growers that are putting up with the regulations and growing the, uh, uh, the foods under the, the certified programs. And um, in doing that, we learned a lot of things that we almost wish we didn't know. But uh, they, a term came up, there's certified organic and there's Bob Webster organic. I like Bob Webster organic the best. <laughs> Common sense organic. <laughs> I'm Bruce Dooley, and um, I've been gone four or five months, for those of you that listen, <laughs> but I think I'm back. I've decided Texas is where I ought to be. Now, I went over and put together an organic garden in Georgia, one in North Carolina, and then I'm putting together a couple hundred uh, apple trees that have been conventional, but he's changing over. And i got to tell you folks, if you haven't been over there, we are so lucky <laughs> where we are getting any organic products uh, east of the Mississippi. There must be a law against it. It's unbelievable what you've got to do to put in an organic situation, even though, strangely enough, there's more uh, of the uh, supported community-supported gardens and things than we have here. But when you go to want to plant something, there's, except for, and I'll use the word because I think some of you guys sell it, espomas there, but there's nobody else. If, it, if that product, uh, and, and so I learned a heck of a lot by being gone, and, and um, I put it on my radio show, the show's called Organic Matters. I leave the real gardening shows now to Bob Webster and John John Boo and Malcolm Bex, and I still can talk gardening, I hope. But I learned so much about these folks wanting to be, I want to say, chemical-free and safe, and they don't have a clue. They really don't know. 
Uh, I just did a thing this morning on one of my morning shows. There's 3,100 chemicals, ladies, in your cosmetics. 3,100, of which none or very few have been tested. And they have what they call secret chemicals because they're, they're protected by some kind of weird uh, law that says you don't have to disclose what's... A proprietary it's a rights. proprietary rights. And when you find out what the oxanes and the things are and the stuff you're putting on your face, I